Hi guys, this is part three of my story so far. You can, I have part one and part two linked below. Um, part one will just pretty much just discuss um, my diagnosis um, and my first miscarriage. And then part two will kind of go over how my second pregnancy went. And um, now we're just going to start at my anatomy scan at 19 weeks and five days and how that went. So I walked into that office. I was very, very nervous, um, kind of trying not to express it very much because, you know, the more you express it, the more it's it will become more real. So um, I tried to just, you know, keep it on the down low, how nervous I was. And um, so we walked in that office and I had, of course, my mom and my husband as usual. And um, I got undressed and I, I got up there and she said, you know, I'm not going to say much. Um, I'm just going to take some measurements and then in the end we can have a little fun. And I said, okay, that's fine. Can you just please show me the heartbeat? Um, cause I kind of hadn't been able to find it. So could you please show me the heartbeat? And she said, yes, she would. And so, um, we, we went ahead and got started and, you know, she was kind of looking around and, um, we saw the baby up there. Uh, I definitely could tell that he wasn't moving a lot, um, or he wasn't moving, but I, I really felt like, well, he was probably sleeping, baby sleep, you know, so he probably was just sleeping. So, um, I kind of was, I, I was scared and my heart was pounding and I could barely breathe, but I was just waiting, just show me that heartbeat. And so she was still doing her measurements right away. She didn't just like literally go, here's the heartbeat. She kind of started over, you know, with the ovaries and, you know, and then she kind of went into the baby and, um, she, and I was looking for the heartbeat. I was just waiting to see that little flicker that we always have seen. And, um, I couldn't bear to look at my mom and to see if she could see it or not. Cause I was just so afraid of her saying she couldn't see it, um, or, you know, so I just kind of stared at that screen and just stared at it and just, just looked so intently for that heartbeat, looked for movement, looked for anything. And she kind of was, she was taking her sweet time. It literally felt like it took her an hour before she actually spoke. And I swear I was just screaming at her in my head, just saying, just show me that heartbeat. I told you, just please show it to me. Why isn't she showing it to me? Is she just being rude I mean a lot of technicians are rude they aren't very nice and don't really care about how you feel so I was just I was getting really irritated with her and I was like seriously if nothing is wrong I am literally going to give you a piece of my mind because this is ridiculous you need to show me the heartbeat that's all I ask you to do and um she took her very sweet time she was slowly kind of putting the the wand on my belly and then she'd take it off and she'd be like <sighs> And she'd go back and she'd do it again. And she just kept doing that over and over until she finally said, who's your doctor? And I just said, Davood. And um, that's my doctor's name. And I, as, as like at that point, my heart definitely stopped. But I told myself, you know, like, don't totally freak out. Like she hasn't said anything yet. But I definitely started to kind of cry very, very, you know, silently. And just, I got scared. And, um. And then and probably about 15 seconds later, she said, I'm going to have to get the on-call doctor. Something is wrong with your baby. And I knew at that exact point, I knew exactly that she didn't have to say one single word. She didn't have to show me anything else. I knew, I knew I never saw the heartbeat. I knew I never saw him move. Um, I, my husband and my mom were, were right there in a second. And I just cried. I cried and cried and cried and I just, was in so much pain I couldn't believe it I could not believe that this was happening and that I mean I was scared and I I knew that I felt like something was gonna happen something bad was gonna happen but I didn't think it was gonna be this bad I didn't think that it was actually that he was gone and that he had died and that was it that was the end and I just it was so terrible and so sad and um and I mean, honestly, I can't really describe to you exactly how I felt. Um, it was, it was just, it was horrible. I didn't think that that was going to happen. So many questions go through your mind at that point. You just are wondering how, why, when, you know, like just 
what was going on so much. It's just, it was, it was heartbreaking. And, um, then the questions are like, what now? What do you, now what do I have to do? Do I, do I have to go home now? Or, you know, it's just so much. I can't even describe to you how many questions go through your head about every single thing that you can possibly think of. It's terrible. So, um, at that point, the doctor, you know, basically told me what my options were. Um, I couldn't really comprehend all those at that point. I kind of just told her to tell my mom and she can, we can talk about it later. Um, we did end up going home. Um, and it took me a while. I finally got my head wrapped around the fact that this was happening. This was going on and I needed to, I needed to get my mind wrapped around it. Um, and I needed to start to figure out what I was going to do at this point. And really, I only had two options. My first option was that I would could do a D and E, which is like basically the exact same thing as a DNC. Um, but the first one's a DNC called dilation and curtilage, cur something where basically they dilate your cervix and then they just kind of suction the baby out. This was in D and E. It's basically the exact same thing. It's called dilation and evacuation. So they um, dilate your cervix again, and then they evacuate the baby. So um, they, I of course knew that my first time I did a DNC, it was very traumatic, very scary, and I really didn't want to do that again. And I also felt like at this point I was so far along, I felt like I needed more. Um, he, he was a baby, and I I felt like I needed for me to heal better. I needed to do it this way. So I needed to actually deliver him. And that was my other option was to actually go in to the hospital and I would be induced and I would um, deliver him. So we went ahead with that option. We went ahead and decided to go to the hospital. So um, that night, actually that exact night, I checked in and they, um, obviously it was just a really scary, very sad um, time. I did end up, um, they, uh, they induced me and I, um, I, it, I went through contractions. I had, I, they were very painful. Um, and they did tell me that, you know, these are going to be just as painful as a normal nine month pregnancy. Um, but the only, it, the only difference is that of course I would not be pushing out a six pound baby he would be very tiny um and also it wouldn't be for probably as long and probably as painful for so long so um i actually embraced this the idea I, I not that i felt like i deserved to be in pain but i i wanted to i just wanted to feel the i just wanted to feel pain i wanted to feel something from this you know i didn't want to just be put out and that was it and that was just going to be the end of my pregnancy I wanted I wanted to actually feel so um I they did say that I could get an epidural or have pain medication I opted completely out of the epidural I didn't feel like I needed it I I've always felt like I could handle um pregnancy or um handle labor uh and so I felt like this wasn't any different but they did offer me pain medication at first I definitely turned it down but as the night went on I I was, of course, hurting. My um, I was hurting. I was mentally hurting. I was physically hurting, and I just felt like this is so mentally and physically draining that I shouldn't be doing this to my body. That I should go ahead and take a little bit of a, of relief. So that's what I did. They did give me a little bit of pain medication, which in the end didn't actually help with the pain. I wouldn't say that it really lessened the pain. It really just made you almost tired. And really don't, you didn't care about the pain as much because you were just so relaxed, basically. That's kind of how I describe it. But it, I think it, you know, it was, I think I, I don't regret that decision in the end. I think it was good for me. I felt like I was so tired. It gave me a chance to kind of sleep and rest and, you know, all that. So, um, that was, they induced me at around 10 o'clock on September 6th. And I actually, um, delivered him on September uh, 7th at around 1 p.m. that uh, afternoon. And 
basically, you know, that was really, really hard to have to actually do that. Um, one thing is that I just knew that I, I was never going to push him out. I was never going to do that. I never wanted him to leave. And, um, but I, in the end, he actually just kind of slipped out and that was it. So, um, it was, at that point I, it was, it was just, it was super devastating. Um, I was scared. I was sad. And, um, I just couldn't believe that that was happening to me. So at that point, I was um, obviously really sad, and it was a very traumatic time for me. Um, and I actually can show you some um, footprints of his. And um, he was very tiny. He actually was nine inches and uh, long, and he was six ounces. Um, these, I mean, this is very precious to me to kind of get an I get to look at this and kind of get an idea of you know how big he was and um because I never actually saw him he had been gone for just too long for me to really get to see him which is really hard for me it's really hard for me to think about that I didn't get to see my baby but he had just been gone for so long that he just wasn't in a in a place and in, in a condition to where as a mother or a father that you know shouldn't probably shouldn't have to see that or you know so I really I, I just I have my pictures and um I'm hoping that that'll be enough for a lifetime I guess but um so yeah I mean at this point my story kind of continues I'm kind of trying to figure out what happened I don't know I'm only um barely three weeks out from this situ this whole ordeal um I of course know that I want to get pregnant again I um I can't wait to be pregnant again, even though I'm probably going to walk into that pregnancy even more scared um, than ever. But um, I know that um, that I will be pregnant again and I will have a baby one day and I just hope it's soon. So I hope that the rest of my story is a happier ending, but um, I guess we'll see. I do want to continue to do these vlogs probably on a weekly basis and really get people to um, kind of get interested in what's going on in my story and hopefully other people can kind of relate to it and I can I really I also want to know that there are other people that have probably gone through the same situation as me so and also my blog is going to have a lot more information on it it's obviously going to go through a lot more in depth of really kind of explain a lot more but hopefully as as we go on you'll probably get more stories from me more information from me so I hope you guys have enjoyed this um, and I hope that we can continue, um, uh, vlogging and getting to know each other. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys later.